Today's topic is called textbook religion. This addresses re how to read the Bible accurately. Not like a textbook from cover to cover, but with feeling. When I first started my journey with God, I was blessed by church members teaching me biblical truths. But I was never taught how to read the Word. I was never taught the importance of how to read the Word. Yes, I was taught to pray before reading the Word, and you should always do that. I read the Bible like a textbook, from beginning to end, about four or five times, leaving me bored and discouraged. I felt like reading it, reading the Bible was monotonous, and it was pure drudgery. Why? Because I didn't know how to read it from the heart. I felt like I was reading it out of pure obligation. John seven nineteen, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Just like the scribes and Pharisees, I knew the law, but I did not keep the law. I didn't understand how to tap into the true power of God and how to deliver the love of Jesus Christ. I was not a reflection of Jesus Christ. I was merely a person who read the Bible and was not led by it. I lacked the conviction of how to illustrate the Word in my own life. The Word was flat and dead. I had no joy in reading the Word. It had lost its luster. I had no light in me. John 8:12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I was baptized, but I was in limbo. I died with Christ, but I lacked the Spirit. I quenched the Holy Spirit by reading the Bible incorrectly. I was legalistic. I lacked true faith and conviction. I didn't see the Bible in the proper way. It was a book filled with words. I didn't experience joy in the Word because I didn't let God lead me to passages that I needed to learn from. Passages of hope and love. For the longest time, I misinterpreted the Word. I was scarred by the Word since childhood. My stepdad was a very violent man that tried to make those around him miserable. He would tell me, Cleanliness is next to godliness, and you are a dirty heathen. As a result, I thought cleanliness was doing a lot of monotonous housework. As a result, I hated that phrase and what it represented. I felt like a dirty, defiled child that couldn't live up to God's expectations of me or my stepdad's expectations. I constantly felt like I was walking on eggshells. I was filled with fear, anxiety, and depression. I hated my stepdad and God. I despised my life and the conditions of my life. I didn't know what love was because it was not revealed to me. Luke twenty four seventeen. What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Even though I felt like God didn't love me, just like my stepdad didn't love me, I still wanted to win God's approval. I wanted God to not be angry with me anymore. I wanted His approval. I desperately wanted to change, but I was in bondage. There was a war raging in my mind, and my heart was stone cold. I didn't want to feel anything anymore, so as a result, love couldn't dwell in me. John seven thirty seven. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I did thirst, but I was as dry as the Mojave Desert. As far as what the scripture had said, I only saw the angry, vengeful Old Testament God who wanted to smite people down. I didn't read in between the lines. I didn't see redemption of the Israelites despite their transgressions. I didn't see hope and joy expressed in the Bible. Isaiah 65, 17-19 for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. God didn't want me to feel oppressed, hopeless, 
and look to a bright he wanted me to look to a bright beautiful future he, he didn't want me depressed all my life God wanted me to feel joy regardless of what trials may come God wanted to show me love but how could he when I was misguided and ignorant of his promises I was so blinded that I didn't know the purpose of the Bible I knew of Jesus and I knew that he died on the cross but I did not know why and I did not understand how this related to God so I seen an angry vengeful God of the Old Testament and Jesus that died on the cross for humanity in the New Testament naturally I didn't connect the dots so I had a big jumbled up mess it is sort of like if my aunt told my grandma a rumor and it spread to my mom and then to me the message would be scrambled Nahum 111 there is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord a wicked counselor my stepdad was the wicked counselor that caused me to imagine evil against the Lord Nahum 1 13 for now will I break his yoke from off thee and will burst thy bonds in sunder the Lord demonstrated this in my life when I was set free from the bondages of confusion and despair truly when I was able to put the past behind me and look to a bright beautiful future then God's love could dwell in me and I'm not saying that everything's always so happy cheerful and joyous all the time these deep-rooted problems that I have had in my life they surface from time to time as Satan likes to push that button but with God's love I can overcome these problems daily even by the minute by the second whatever whenever this sneaks up on me I just go to God and it's better I no longer harbored revenge against my stepdad and lived a life without trust when I broke free from being paranoid and believing that I had accusers on every side then God's love could dwell in me and find its final resting place John 3:18. he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God I was once condemned and thought I had accusers on every side sometimes still in life I struggle with this although it is greatly improved I mean these things when you have childhood trauma they surface back and forth from time to time but as long as you have God there you don't have to dwell in those feelings there's times in the past I would dwell on these feelings for two weeks a month or more but if it hits me and I am prepared to deal with the onset of Satan as it talks about in Peter then dealing with the onset of the devil before it becomes one big tangled mess of a telephone cord as you would um, that makes life better it makes it so much easier to not dwell in misery on a constant basis John 8 10 through 11 woman where are those thine accusers hath no man condemned thee neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more we have to prepare our hearts to receive the word and believe the word we must search the scriptures not because we have to out of obligation but because we have hope with hope comes faith and the promises of God John 5:39. search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me after receiving and believing we demonstrate the powers of God by sharing his word with others for with great power comes great responsibility this is something I want everyone to think about today in their lives if you've suffered past trauma and you're still struggling with it perhaps you've gone to therapy and it seems like the angry feelings just keep compiling worse well maybe for a brief moment they do but once you work through that anger and you take that luggage and you empty out every bag you have and you sort through it 
like you put in one pile this is accurate this is not accurate this is the past I will let go of it and so forth you will start to get better I know from experience now let me say a prayer with you today dear Heavenly Father who art in heaven please bless this ministry and please bless the people whom it helps and please help more people to be helped by this ministry and please bless our enemies for they know not what they do just like my stepdad did not know the evil he was committing because he was on drugs he wasn't in the right frame of mind so he hurt me hurting people hurt people that's what Joyce Myers once said and it is so true so at least in our own efforts when we examine our heart um, we can prevent hurting people we can prevent this domino effect just by seeking the Lord and giving ourselves peace before we speak before we act so we can do the right things father we love you very much we're happy and joyous and we're having life to the best abundance we can Lord and we know why you died on the cross because you loved us so much father and we appreciate your sacrifice even though we did not deserve it in Jesus name I pray amen